Thailand outlook. สวัสดีครับ Welcome to Thailand Outlook. I'm your host today, Gretchen Wit Dotchit. Today we embarked on a riveting exploration of the latest developments that illustrate the vibrant essence of our country, Thailand. Now, in a bid to paint its borders with hues of invitation, Thailand has unfurled a new chapter by easing the process of visa application. As our nation aims to rejuvenate the vibrant spirit of tourism, this step paves the way for globe trotters to explore our land with ease. Also, the resplendent harmony of Thailand's policies echoes far and wide. As the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, showers praises upon our nation's commitment to caring for people of all sectors equally. A beacon of inclusivity, Thailand's vision casts a light that brightens lives regardless of their path. Now, Thailand's ambitions reach beyond the earth boundaries as we prepare to launch not one. But two Theos, two satellites into the cosmos later this year, and these celestial emissaries are points to unlock mysteries. While their journey embodies our nation's yearning for knowledge and exploration. And finally, embracing the future while nurturing the present, Thailand introduces the Smart Gen Tourism Challenge project, an embodiment of our dedication to sustainable tourism. As we tread forward, this initiative underscores our commitment to preserving our national wonders and cultural treasures for generations to come. Thailand Outlook. Our first story today talks about changes that are afoot to make the country even more welcoming to visitors. In a bid to boost tourism, Thailand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has taken a bold step by streamlining the visa application process. The result: a smoother experience for tourists, particularly those from China. They have trimmed down the list of required documents, making it easier for travelers to set foot in this vibrant nation. Now, all you need is your passport copy, a recent photograph, a flight booking confirmation. Proof of accommodation, a document showing your current residency, and a pinch of financial proof. Also, the visa processing time has been sliced in half. What used to take 14 working days now takes just seven, and this means you can get your adventure started sooner than ever before. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Tourism and Sports, and the Tourism Authority of Thailand. Are joining forces to create a streamlined system for verifying supporting documents, and this tech-savvy move will supercharge the verification process, ensuring that your journey to Thailand is swift and hassle-free. Now let's talk strategy. Thailand's tourism gurus have been busy crafting a new approach to attract travelers from Europe, North America, and the Middle East. These regions are known for bringing in visitors who tend to stay longer and、uh, spend more money. And speaking of numbers, Thailand is setting its sights high. In 2023, they're aiming to roll out the welcome mat for over seven million long-haul tourists, raking in a whopping 660 billion baht for the country. And numbers from the first half of the year are already impressive. Around 2.9 million tourists graced Thailand's shores from Europe, 620,000 from North America, and 231,000 from the Middle East. To cater to this growing demand, the Tourism Authority of Thailand is spreading its wings. A brand new office is in the works for Chicago, adding to their existing bases in New York and Los Angeles. But they're not stopping there. An office in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, is also on the horizon, thanks to the blossoming diplomatic ties between the two countries. Thailand outlook. And welcome back to the show. This is Thailand outlook. 
We have an inspiring story that highlights Thailand's remarkable efforts in uh, taking care of its people from all walks of life, earning it recognition on the global stage. The Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Hassan Brahmin Taha, has praised Thailand for its exceptional policies that prioritize equality and inclusivity. And these policies have become a cornerstone for Thailand's growth, fostering development, prosperity, and harmonious coexistence. And according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and this recognition has not、um, gone unnoticed. Thailand and the IOC are working hand in hand to strengthen their bilateral relations and collaboration. They are looking to team up on various fronts, particularly in the realm of development. Thailand is eager to share its expertise in areas like agriculture, aquaculture, tourism, and public health with other nations through the strategic tripartite development partnership. The IOC Secretary General. Also lauded Thailand's efforts in fostering peace and progress in its southern border provinces. The Thai government's commitment to promoting religious freedom and peaceful coexistence among diverse ethnic and religious groups also garnered positive attention at IOC meetings. And it is very clear that Thailand is on a mission to create a harmonious society for everyone in the country. Thailand and the IOC are also getting or setting their sights. On an ambitious trilateral development cooperation involving Africa, this collaboration promises to facilitate meaningful interactions with African nations, allowing Thailand to share its wealth of expertise in crucial areas like public health, food security, climate change, and also sustainable development. Now, the IOC Secretary General encouraged Thailand to go the extra mile by extending its agricultural knowledge. And sufficiency economy philosophy to its African counterparts. The aim is to ignite sustainable development that is firmly rooted in self-reliance and leaves no one behind. Thailand Outlook. You are listening to Thailand Outlook. I'm Kachang with Dotjit. Now, in a groundbreaking move, Thailand is set to launch not one but two satellites as part of its innovative Theos 2 projects. And this project marks a remarkable achievement as Thailand's maiden Earth observation satellite endeavor, conceived and brought to life by a dedicated team of Thai scientists and engineers. And the stars of the show? Well, we have the main star, the illustrious Theos 2. Poised to journey into orbit this September from a launch pad nestled in French Guiana, South America. Meanwhile, the supporting act, Theos 2A, will have its moment in the spotlight in late October, taking off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on India's Srihari Kota Island. Now, I must note that these schedules are subject to change based on the ever-evolving situation and other pertinent factors. Now, Theos 2, with its pioneering potential, rests comfortably at the Airbus test facility in Toulouse, France, while its companion Theos 2A finds its temporary home at the Space Inspirium in Siracha, Chonburi Province. And by investing in space infrastructure and fostering a burgeoning space industry, Thailand is on a trajectory towards stability, prosperity, and sustainability. And speaking of space infrastructure. The Space Inspirium in Siracha, Chonburi Province, is a state-of-the-art facility that boasts international standards for satellite testing and component building. It's here that a group of 20 talented Thai engineers underwent rigorous training in space technology, courtesy of the United Kingdom. And these knowledge carriers are not keeping it to themselves; they've been instrumental in sharing their expertise with the wider community. Enhancing capacity building efforts, and the government is also working on crafting a satellite of its own, a 100% Thai-made marvel, aptly named Theos 3. Thailand Outlook. And in our final story today, 
The Tourism Authority of Thailand, also known as TAT, has taken an innovative step by organizing a competition that seeks out the ultimate sustainable development plan for Thai tourism. And the competition is named the Smart Gen Tourism Challenge. And this challenge brings together the minds of 10 dynamic teams from universities across Thailand, all united by their passion for sustainability and their vision for the future of Thai tourism. And the heart of the project lies in recognizing the vital role that the new generation, or Gen Z, plays in shaping the tourism industry's value chain. And with this in mind, the Smart Gen Tourism Challenge is designed to be a platform that kind of empowers and nurtures these young innovators, providing them with the opportunity to elevate and transform the Thai tourism sector. Now, the title of Champions goes to Boundless, hailing from the Prince of Songkla University, and their winning project, The Way of Mani, or Sai Lom Witi Mani in Thai, has earned them not just accolades, but a substantial cash prize of 50,000 baht, an honorary trophy, and airline tickets from none other than Air Asia. Also, Radio Thailand had the chance to catch up with Sapawat Kantamara, the strategic marketing and sustainability manager of Fine Folk Company Limited. He enlightened us on the ins and outs of the Smart Gen Tourism Challenge, offering insights into its objectives, the rigorous selection process, and the outstanding outcomes that have emerged. All right, for the Smart Gen Tourism Challenge, this challenge or this contest, we aim for finding the new generation to create or to uh, develop the tourism plan for the uh, SDG goals and for the uh, the global trends right now which is the sustainability so we are fighting uh, the new gen to to do this and develop the best solution for our world for our uh, Thai tourism so the, the, the criteria before we come up with this, we start with researching the student all around the, the, the country, Thailand, and we selected uh, until we have 20 finalists. And after we got the finalists from election committees, and we find the most possible plan for the tourism sectors, and we bring them to do the, the training, team building, to develop them in, in terms of the sustainable tourism uh, criteria or concept about what the plan should be. So we uh, we got a lot of uh, teachers and professors in, in tourism sectors to coach them about how to write a good plan and the plan must be possible. So after we, we got them the 20 uh, selected teams, we come up with the 10 team today that we uh, do the contest again to showcase what they have you will see in the, in, in the event. We have the, the 10 booth to show that what plan that they do. For example, some of the plan they do is talk about the uh, bring the innovation for in the tourism, like to do the application, to do the booking, and also to do the business development plan as well. Uh, and that we got the winner already for, for today. And for those of you who are eager to learn more about the innovative solutions and sustainable development plans crafted by these 10 visionary teams, you're in luck. All the intricate details can be explored on the project's official website, worldwideweb.smartgentourismchallenge.com. And if you are an avid social media follower, don't forget to check out the Facebook page dedicated to the project. It's called Smart Gen Tourism Challenge. And that wraps up today's edition of Thailand Outlook. From streamlining visa applications to launching satellites into the cosmos, from fostering sustainable tourism to empowering the brilliant minds of the younger generation, Thailand is now making waves with its innovative initiatives and visionary projects. And these stories not only showcase Thailand's commitment to progress, but also highlight its dedication to sustainability, inclusivity, and international collaboration. From promoting tourism while caring for its people of all sectors to reaching for the stars with its satellite endeavors, Thailand is proving that its vision knows no bounds. And once again, thank you for joining us today. I'm Gatang with Dotchit. Until next time, Swati Krap. Thailand Outlook.
On October 12, 2022, Cambodia was truly honored to chair the second ASEAN Women Leaders Summit under the theme, Building a More Sustainable, Inclusive and Resilient Future, Unlocking Women's Entrepreneurship in ASEAN. As ASEAN Chair in 2022, Cambodia encouraged collaboration and joint commitment to promoting women's entrepreneurship as a key driving force for sustainable and resilient socioeconomic recovery and development towards a shared future and prosperity. ASEAN is a region with high economic potential and rapid development, owning largely to women's active participation. With ASEAN economies relying heavily on micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, many of which are led by women. As a matter of fact, MSMEs account for 98% of all enterprises in Cambodia, contributing approximately 58% to the national economy and creating approximately 73% of total jobs. Women own and manage approximately 61% of all MSMEs. With this in mind, the government of Cambodia has identified and promoted women as the backbone of national socio-economic development by increasing investment in gender equality and promoting the role of women in development across all sectors and levels. During the ASEAN Women Leaders Summit, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, and UN Women released the ASEAN Policy Action Brief, Advancing Gender and Business Reporting to Implement the Women's Economic Principles, WEPs, as part of an inclusive COVID-19 economic recovery. In his opening remarks, ASEAN Secretary General Dato Lim Jok Hoi emphasized the transformative role of women as agents of inclusive economic growth. ASEAN and its member countries have the opportunity under this policy to catalyze women's economic participation and empowerment by developing public policies to advance women's equal participation and leadership in business, as well as encouraging private sector companies to report progress on gender-specific indicators. Furthermore, women's equal participation in business is critical to their economic empowerment and by extension, all economic and societal development. Within the ASEAN framework, women will continue to play an important role presently and in the future particularly in recovering and enhancing ASEAN economic growth that is long-term, inclusive and resilient. It is apparent that women entrepreneurs in ASEAN have faced numerous challenges in business development and management since most start businesses at the informal micro level and the vast majority of businesses are yet to be formally registered. Therefore, the second ASEAN Women Leaders Summit demonstrates a strong commitment to fostering women's entrepreneurship, ASEAN women's centrality of connection, and the collective ASEAN community. Understanding that localized solutions are needed for the particular issues besetting Thailand's southernmost provinces as they seek peace and harmony. Sub-district peace councils were created and continue to operate in the region. The councils were conceptualized by the Southern Border Provinces Administration Center, or SBPAC. They are part of the center's effort to create stability, prosperity, and sustainability for the South down to the sub-district level. The councils were designed to build unity and cohesion from the ground up and are populated by actual Southern civil servants who already operate closely with locals and have a unique understanding of their ways and needs. 
Subdistrict Peace Councils includes district chiefs, soldiers, police, village heads, and village elders, as well as local administrative organization officials and local religious leaders and collectives. Some even contain local philosophers and representatives from youth and women's groups. The core activity of the councils is drafting and proposing ideas for development. These proposals span the matters of community economies to social well-being. Differentiating the councils from other state agencies or organizations in the area and reinforcing the purity of their work, they are restricted from requesting funding for programs such as observational tours or the purchase of equipment. All of their actions must display the objective of development and adhere to the core needs of their sub-district. The central government has asked that the councils bridge in any gaps that exist between other agencies and apparatuses that are working towards peace in the South, such as the SBPAC and local administrations. Over the years, the councils have organized meetings, discussions, and conferences addressing various issues affecting the southern border provinces. These meetings have collected a variety of opinions and perspectives from southern residents, providing a deeper understanding of the region's situation and their needs. They also created opportunities for officials to explain government plans and projects to better the South. Sub-district peace councils are just one example of the localized solutions being carried out by the administration in the southern border provinces and are an affirmation that it acknowledges the need for such remedies in the area. A new agreement between UN Women and Thailand's Office of SME's Promotion, OSMEP, aims to improve gender responsiveness in public and private procurement, particularly for women-led small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, supplying large corporations and government departments. On March 27th, OSMEP Director General and the Acting Regional Director of the UN Women Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific signed a Memorandum of Understanding, or an MOU. The MOU establishes a strong framework for the two organizations to collaborate in creating an ecosystem in which more underrepresented groups, including women in SMEs, can lead businesses and equally access and benefit from more inclusive market opportunities. Thailand's economy is heavily reliant on SMEs, and this is true even after the pandemic as countries strive to keep up with their ASEAN counterparts and global markets. Empowering SMEs and closing gender gaps in business have become critical imperatives. Under this new agreement, in the month of International Women's Day, OSMAP joined forces with the UN Women to spearhead research initiatives, improve SMEs' databases, and foster connections between SMEs and buyers from both the public and private sectors. Three distinct goals underpin the collaboration framework. Firstly, the framework includes joint research studies or policy reviews aimed at supporting supplier diversity and more gender responsive procurement. Second, Efforts will be made to improve the database and establish a clear definition of women-owned business in Thailand, categorizing it by business type. Future economic policies will benefit from this systematic data collection and analysis. And finally, the framework aims to generate market opportunities by connecting buyers from the private and public sectors with female entrepreneurs and gender-responsive businesses. This collaboration is part of the United Nations Women's We Rise Together program, which aims to empower underrepresented groups of entrepreneurs, particularly women in SMEs, and to create equal market opportunities in Thailand and Vietnam, 
by advancing supplier diversity through gender-responsive procurement. Given that women-owned businesses account for only 1% of total procurement spending, fair policies and guidelines for public and private procurement are more important than ever for economic growth and gender equality. The program aims to shift public and corporate procurement, encouraging both sectors to source more from diverse suppliers. A land of golden temples and ornate mosques, beliefs and rituals, travelers seeking spirituality will find uplifting experiences in Thailand. Supporting all faiths, Thailand offers a wide variety of destinations and opportunities to learn about religions and their practices, with each community welcoming and open to travelers. Pay respect for greater merit or gain deeper insight into different beliefs. Faith tourism is diverse and dynamic in Thailand. Part of the new chapter of Thailand with its new opportunities and innovations, the Kingdom's government supports the presentation of the Prince Mahidon Award. Bestowed by the Prince Mahidon Foundation for outstanding performance and research in the field of medicine for the benefit of mankind and outstanding contributions in the field of public health, the award highlights Thailand's appreciation of progress, especially for the health and well-being of all. Thailand Magazine Tucked deep in the heart of a verdant valley and surrounded by walls of endless mountains, the town of Pai in Ma Hong Son province seems to exist in a realm all its own. Here, nature is both a comforting friend and welcoming host to any traveler looking to sit back and enjoy its peace and tranquility. The bamboo and white river rafting scene, especially popular among adventurous souls, is considered one of the best ways to appreciate this picturesque landscape. If you'd rather stick to dry land, hiking and mountain trekking are also great ways to soak in the unique vistas when you're not browsing the grand array of exotic local souvenir shops located at the town center. And while exploring Outer Bai, why not consider visiting the natural hot springs, waterfalls, and ethnic hill tribe villages that help characterize this remarkable region? For many travelers, Coming to Pai simply means slowing down completely. Artsy types can also be found at many of the town's cafe galleries, while others prefer to lounge away on their favorite riverside porch or a quiet, stress-free bar. A fundamental asset of Thailand's rich tourism landscape is its local identities. Dynamic, attractive, and amazingly varied, Every local community in Thailand offers a different and enriching experience for travelers, both within the nation and from anywhere in the world. From the fabric weavers of the north to the fishing villages of the south, travelers to Thailand will find an array of local identities. For ASEAN to recover and reclaim its prosperity post the COVID-19 crisis, Thailand is supporting the ASEAN Center for Public Health Emergencies and Emerging Diseases, set to be a nexus of excellence and regional hub to strengthen ASEAN's regional capabilities to prepare for, prevent, detect, and respond to public health emergencies and emerging diseases. The center is key to the revitalization of ASEAN. Thailand's government is fully supporting locally made textiles, furniture, and much more so that they may bring about the new chapter of Thailand with new opportunities and innovations. Uplifting Thailand's local craftsmen as well as its domestic manufacturers, government programs and policies are presenting locally made Thai products to the world as well as elevating their profile at home. <laughs> <laughs> 